if you want to know exactly how a histogram works, I mean, how to calculate the frequency, how to calculate the class widths, then you are on the right video today. So make sure you stick around. Hey guys, this is Chad and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here and I'd ask that you subscribe to this channel, go ahead and support me. I'd really appreciate it and it would mean the world to me. Um, that way I can keep doing these videos. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, uh, I, I just want to say thank you and thanks for supporting this channel. Today we're talking about histograms and it's really a two-part series. Um, now we're going to cover the entire histogram in this series or in this video, but the reason I'm doing the histogram or this video on histograms is because I want you to understand uh, something that um, really I struggled with early on in my career, and that was CP and CPK. And to under understand CP and CPK, I think you need to have a good fundamental understanding of what the histogram is and how to calculate and plot a histogram uh, without using Excel. I mean, literally understand the, you know, if you had a sheet of paper and you had some measurements, how to actually plot a histogram on your own. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video, and that'll give you a good base on uh, baseline understanding of uh, what you would need to know for CP and CPK, which I'll do in the next video. Okay, so let's get started. Um, right here, you can see on the screen we have histograms, and it can, we can really break this down into a few easy steps. First of all, we need data, right? So it can be data from a machine, it can be data um, taken from um, you know, measuring a bottle caps, if you're producing bottle caps, you know, whatever that data is, you need data. The second thing you need to do is you need to, to determine the class width um, which we'll get into. The third thing is chart the classes and frequency. This is something you don't really have to do, but I like to do it because it helps It helps to keep everything um, nice and organized. And then the last thing is you need to do is to go ahead and plot that histogram. All right, so I have the definition of a histogram here, and I wanted to just have it here so we could have an idea of what a histogram is defined as. I think I got this from Google somewhere. So the definition for a histogram is a diagram in which the area is proportional to the frequency of variable and whose width is equal to the class interval. Wait, what is, I said earlier that we needed numbers, right? Or we needed some measurements. So right here we have measurements. I went ahead and put some in. So let's say we have these measurements in place, okay? So um, that's the first step, right? Step number one, we have our measurements. So then we go on to step number two. And step number two says we need to determine the class width, right? So this is step number two. So how do we do that? So the class width, we say we take the largest number and we divide it by the smallest number. So if we look at our numbers in the in this area, right under our measurements, um, then what we have is we have 18, 20, 21, 20, 19, 20, 21, 22, 19, 19, 20, 21. Um, that should be supposed to be a 19 here. Whoops. We'll just go back and write 19 to make it official. Okay. And then 20. Um, so we'll go ahead and work that math out now. So if we look at our largest number, let's see, it's 22, right? Yep, 22. So the largest equals 22. And we divide it by the smallest. And the smallest is, I think it's 18. And that equals 1.22. Now, we don't want to end up with a 1.22 as a as a class width, okay? Um, we we, we want to have an even number. So if it was five, you want to go to six. Um, if it was you know seven, you want to go to eight. You just want an even number. So for this one, I will um, increase until two, right? So we'll say two is our class width. So the third thing we need to do is to chart the classes and frequency. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna scroll on down here and uh, I'm gonna write classes and frequency. Try to keep a straight line here. All right, so let's look at our classes. And the way you do that is you look at the lowest number. So we said the lowest number was 18. So we start with the lowest number 
I'm going to switch up colors here really quick so we can see the red. So we start with our lowest number, which is 18. We find that that's 18, our lowest number. Okay, and then we add in the two that we have here that we say is going to be our class width. Okay, so if it was 18, now we wouldn't say 18, 19, 20 like you maybe traditionally would. We would use 18 as one of the numbers. So it would really go 18 is one and then 19 is one. So that gives us the two class width that we're looking for. So I know traditionally what you would do is you'd go 18 plus two, right? Equals 20, but we're not doing that that way. We're saying we're using each number as a class uh, or a number in the class. And th this is just how it's supposed to be done. So you know, to give you an example, if you were to have, um, let's say our, our a class category was uh, six or our class width was six, then I would go, okay, if it was six, I would go 18, 19, 20, 21, and I'd really go one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got, you have your, you're actually class width here, one, two, three, four, five, six, because you know we have that's our class width. And we would go from 18 to 23. And I'll show you how this stands out in a minute, but or how this is gonna be represented in a moment, but I just want you to kind of get an idea of that's how we calculate that. So we got 18, 19. Alright, we'll write those classes in. And then you go back up to your measurements and you look for anything that falls between 18 and 19. So we have the 18, of course, we have 19, 2, uh, 19, 3, 19, 4, 19, 5. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers that fall in there. So the frequency for that would be 5. And then the next class you would just take from the 19 would be 20. So we go 20. And again, remember, we go 20. 21 and those are our two class widths so we would say 20 to 21 and the reason we have small class widths is because our measurements are so tight you know if we had a process where our measurements were a bit more loose then we'd have more class widths or more class categories or more classes right so 2021 20, let's count those we have one two three four five six seven eight we have eight and then we go 22, 23, and we have one, one of those, one. And that's the classes and the categories. Now, when you draw out your histogram, the third part, or the fourth part, right? Fourth part of your histogram is plot the histogram. So now let's plot our histogram, and but I'm going to plot this a little differently. Plot this in blue. So I'm just going to draw my blue line here, blue line over, because this is our y-axis, and on our y-axis we have frequency, and then on our x-axis we have the number of classes or measurements. It could be, you know, it could be the 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 width of a widget or the length of a widget or you know how whatever that is. So just a, I'll put. Um, how about we just do it? Keep it like this. We'll put. Um, width of widget to make it easy, and then I'm going to plot this in green though to make it a bit stand out a bit. Now, uh, let's look at our numbers again. Now, when we this is why I like doing the the little chart here with the classes and frequency. Um, if we look at 18 and 19, what I really plot on my histogram are these numbers right here. That's the numbers I plot on my histogram. So I'll go 18, 20, 22, and since it's in twos, I'll go one more in a class of 24. Because when we finish, you'll see we'll, we'll need that extra class there. And it's okay. Um, 
you'll see why it works out that way. But then we also need to uh, look at our frequencies and we have a maximum of eight here. So what I'll usually like to do is I'll go to like 10. I'll just go a little over. And then we had a minimum of one. I'll come there and put zero. So it'll be like two, four, six, eight. So we'll go eight, six, four, and two. So now we want to go ahead and plot the frequency of those classes. So from 18 to 19, we had a frequency of five. So you come down and you find about where five is and you plot, and it should be on that 20, but you plot the five, okay? And then you go to the next one, 2021, 20, you had a frequency of eight. So from 20 to 21, you had a frequency of eight. And then for 22 to 23, you had a frequency of one. So two to 23, you have a frequency of about one. So that's how you would plot your histogram. Now I know again, I use very tight numbers here. So we didn't have a big, a large class width, um, but it at least shows you on how you can get started with plotting your histogram. It gives you the basics of how a histogram should work. And this should give you the fundamental um, sort of baseline for my next video, which is going to be CP and CPK. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, if you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button as well. I'd appreciate the follow. See you in the next video.